Welcome to the Innovation Meets Leadership Podcast. Real inspiration for real innovators. If you're looking for innovation and leadership transformation, your journey starts now. Welcome to the Innovation Meets Leadership Podcast. I'm your host, Natalie Bourne. I would love if you would help us spread the word by leaving a review wherever you listen to podcasts. And don't forget to share this podcast on all of your social media platforms. Well, today, my guest is Shay Gerhardt. Prior to founding Butterflies Tech, Shay spent nearly two decades in executive roles in the mobile, gaming, and music industries. Having worked with major music labels, including Universal, Sony, EMI, and Warner Brothers, and also um, some of the world's largest mobile kind of wireless companies. So think about your AT&Ts, your Sprints, your T-Mobiles. Um, she's built a career around developing a clear focus and a path to cutting through the noise in crowded and stale industries and growing business where user-centric products are king. Welcome to the podcast, Shay. Thanks, Natalie. Thanks so much for having me. Well, you know what? You created this product that I would love to just unpack and talk about kind of the whys behind it. You created a wireless and wired uh, earbud system. And obviously, you know, this is a pretty big space. So I'm curious of, of what what got you into this space and why did you feel the need to enter such a huge space like this? So we really, I mean, so there's the how I got into it and then the why. So the why, like the proverbial why. So the how is is sort of interesting. I mean, I was in innovative spaces my whole career. My Obviously, my favorite businesses I worked with were entrepreneurial businesses that we grew, a few of which I PO'd. Um, and so I love this space and I love thinking about how we can do things differently. My expertise was going into big crowded spaces, finding a path to growth and cutting down through the cutting through the noise and the clutter of that space and really finding a way that we can address, make change and innovation in those big industries. Um, but for this particular case, I was um, one weekend. I'm in Colorado, and one weekend we were. I was. It, we had a powder day, and in Colorado, you want to get first tracks. They call it. They'd be the first to ski down. Um, and my we had three little boys, and my husband was like, "Why don't you go by yourself?" So I was like, "Okay." But the night before, I was super anxious that I wouldn't get up early enough. <clears throat> fell asleep with a podcast, listening to a podcast, um, but had um, those Apple AirPods that were wired mm -hmm. in and woke up with this crazy, aching, terrible feeling. Yeah. And prior to that, I listened to a ton of audiobooks and podcasts. Like there's that moment when you get like 20 minutes to yourself yep. and you get to listen to the content that you love. I mean, and just go for a walk or or even do the dishes or whatever you have to do. It's just a cool, like, you know, sort of we refer to it as the brain vacation. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had a, had been doing that. I didn't actually have achy, sore pain with earbuds prior to this, but my I'd asked my friends, like, have you listened to this podcast? Have you listened to this audiobook? It's so cool. And they would be like, no, I can't wear earbuds that long. They hurt, they fall out. Yeah. Um, and so this morning was the first morning I had it. So I woke up, I there, it's made with a plastic clamshell design. The, all earbuds in the market have this plastic clamshell design where there's a seam down the middle. So I split the seam down the middle, put it into my kid's swimmer's wax, um, and then was able to wear my earbuds all day underneath my ski helmet. And it was super comfortable. The sound environment was so much cleaner, um, uh, even for that that speaker system they have. And so I like the next day I had to come into my um, office and to my CFO who's a good friend. I was like, listen to what I invented this weekend. And he's like, oh, that has to exist. Right. <laughs> so we looked for a really long time. We did a ton of research to make sure that um, earbud, this pain point um, is actually a pain point besides just my little group of friends. Um, and it turns out it's the number one pain point in the industry. Yeah. So that's why we that's the sort of how we got to starting it. And the why for us, the really what motivates us the most, I mean, we named butterflies, it butterflies after butter, I mean, obviously the ear, the pun on the earbud, <laughs> but um, after the butterfly effect, where much like the flap of the butterfly's wings um, can affect weather patterns on the other side of the world, so too can the adoption of a growth mindset and, um, and knowledge wow. um, and learning different perspectives from different voices. So that's really where 
you know, so we always hire for this curiosity and this lifelong learner. Um, and that is where our why comes from, because there's a, the barrier to entry um, for a lot of earbud, heavy earbud users is this pain point. And so really being able to break down that barrier and make it as comfortable and the most enjoyable that moment you can have is what, where our why comes from. Well, we got to back up for a second because I just love that you were like, let me just create my own thing. Like, I think that's so brilliant. And I think it probably speaks to, um, does it speak to some of your training or your background where, um, were most of the things you were creating like in software? Have you ever done anything in hardware? Like, let's talk about that for a second. Cause I don't know, like I have that same pain point that you have with earbuds and especially I bought some new ones and they're really big. And I'm like, these are way too big for my ear and they fall out all the time. And so I just love that you took it into your own hands and said, wait a minute, I think I can create something better on the fly. Like says no one ever when it comes to something like that, I'd be so afraid to take my earbud apart and figure out what was inside of it. So like, how did you know that you could do that? Is this something that's kind of nods to your background? No, I mean, again, I love entrepreneurial businesses where you're always trying to think differently, always thinking out of the box. I do. I mean, since graduate school, I've, I do, and I always invented things. Um, like one example, and this is terrible and why I didn't launch it, but we had a kitten and he hated being brushed. So I had my husband cut a round hole out of, one of our door that where, where he went into the litter box and then put like a brush around it <laughs> so he could brush himself when he came back in and out. And he's like, really, I have to invent this again? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I always like I'm looking for new ways to to do things and but for, for me, I, I do have this passion for business and, and growing businesses. And so despite all my many other inventions, which uh, there's a long list, um, I, we really wanted to make sure this is a big enough market. Is this, you know, is there something here and is there a way, is it, you know, what's, what's the opportunity market? So it is a huge industry, $30 billion now, and they're projecting it to be $152 billion in the next few wow. years. Um, no one is dominant, oh, has over 50% of market share in the space. I mean, Apple AirPods have about 34%. Wow. So there's a lot. And, and the earbud was essentially developed 15, 14 years ago with the iPod and meant for 20 minutes of music listening. So mm. no one expected when that design was, was created that people would be listening from one to seven hours a day, which heavy earbud users are using them. From, um, and so they have just not adapted to the new use case while it's growing because of adaption. Like now people are leaving home with their keys, their phone and their earbuds. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, and so it's become such a standard way of life these days, but the industry, because they've seen growth due to just because of content like yours, um, it, people are enjoying them so much, much longer that, but they haven't changed what they've been doing. I mean, the industry's, Current solution is that little rubber foam ear tip that comes on the end of a number of earbuds. Yeah. Still with that, the number one complaint is ear fatigue and soreness. Yes. And it's interesting, when we started getting into the research, um, <clears throat> the human ear is constantly moving when you talk and chew and exercise. Mm -hmm. um, and that constant movement against all, the, all that hard plastic designs with the current earbuds, I mean, all earbuds are made that way that constant friction on the ear causes ear fatigue and soreness. It also, the vibrations of sound coming through that plastic causes ear fatigue in your cartilage or it's called sound fatigue in your cartilage. Mm -hmm. And then the last reason is because it's always moving on that, that hard material design, it's called walkout. So it sort of scoots it out of your ear yeah. and causes it to fall out. Yeah. So we designed, it took us a really long time, but we designed an earbud that flexes with your ear as it moves and it, the longer you wear it, the more comfortable they, it becomes because it works for your body heat. Um, and so it solves, and it has a damping effect. So it solves that vibration of sound as well. I love this. Wild. I love this. <laughs> this is so incredible. Cause you know, I think you, you are hitting the heart of a problem that, uh, I mean, I can just sit here and, and as I'm listening to you describe all that, I'm like, I'm like, yes. And like, yes. And to all of it. And it's, it's definitely, 
frustrating. And, you know, you think about when 2020 hit and we're taking all these conference calls and, you know, you're, you might be in the same room with someone else who's on a call and you both need to be in a headset so that you're not disturbing each other's calls. And then we had the kids on calls. So all of this, you know, just go down the list. It's creating this, this need for us to wear these, um, wear these headphones longer and to hear that they were only meant for a short period of time. It totally makes sense because from my experience, I haven't seen anything that's been comfortable until I started to look into your product. But I have a question, like what gave you the courage to say, hey, I'm going to go head to head in in this area against some of the big guys to, to try to really solve this problem? So, I mean, I think, I actually think women approach it differently. Like I, we spent a long time qualifying that this is a big enough market opportunity, qualifying that this is a big enough um, uh, pain point in the marketplace that we can actually sell against it. And then finding, finding material design and a, and a functional design that is durable yet this comfortable. Um, and so I, I, spent a lot of time validating it before I ever went out to get ca- raise capital against it. Um, I'm terrible at timed pitches. And so I actually one time took this, like from a local VC, took a timed pitch class. Like, how do you do that? <laughs> um, and by the end of the class, he was like, you are terrible at pitching, but we want to invest. <laughs> so that's actually sort of the impetus of what, how it happened. Like he was like, that getting that first initial investment really sort of gave us wings so we could start to manufacture the product and, and get it out to market. And then once we got it on the market, people just loved it, which is the coolest experience. I mean, it took us five years. Um, and just to have people get it in their hands. I mean, you know, we did a ton of testing, like we did media buys against it and then made sure like people wanted to buy it. Is this price point work for them? They purchased it and then we would return their money. Um, so we did a lot of that, but until you get into someone's hands, you don't quite know. Yeah. And I mean, we now have like, you know, we just had someone, which we had a manufacturing defect. It's minor, but someone returned something. She was like, my earbuds stopped working, but I can't go a day without them. Can you FedEx me a new pair? I love that. (laughs) For a new brand, I'd be like, no, you're done. I'm done with you. Right. Yeah. They're like, yeah, people love it. So it's awesome. Well, I love that you had the courage to say, we are absolutely onto something and this is worth investing in. What I also love about your story is that you took the time, you went out and did the research, you really made sure that the problem that you were trying to solve was a true problem. And I think you found out pretty quickly, it absolutely <laughs> is a true real problem. And then I just love the stickiness of your product for, for people to say, hey, I'm returning this, but I just need another one like right now. because you know, my productivity is going to go down if I don't have your product. And I think that that's the hallmark of an incredible product. I want to talk a little bit about like, what were some of your, your just core takeaways um, as a product developer, as you kind of started to lean into the idea, validate that it was an actual good idea? Like, what were some of the takeaways you had on that journey? So, I mean, because we invented something that didn't exist in the world, and actually I had a ton of product people in this space tell me it couldn't be done. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, I mean, there's no doubt about it. Like a lot of times I joke that having a startup is going from one setback to another with enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I mean, it took us, we failed uh, probably 50 times on on our prototyping capability. And, but with, then we did it. Um, and I just, I, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of ups and downs. There's a lot of challenges. And, and as a sort of inventor, you also have to find, because like you mentioned earlier, my background is primarily in digital. Um, while we were always inventing new products and, and designs, we were, it was in a different space, right? So I also had to find people who knew what they were doing. So that took a long time, but I have an incredible team that just is so much smarter than I am in that regard. And they um, are on this journey with me. So I think finding a team um, is really important. And I, I mean, outside of product development, which 
which is fun and interesting. I think one of the biggest hurdles I've had is we have such cool vision for this company and where it's going to go as the, as the industry grows. And it's hard to, to not want to do the next thing is right away. Like we thought, you know, our first product, we thought it was just going to be an MVP, a minimal viable product, get it on the market, get good consumer learning from it. And then we would launch the next product. Well, that first product has did so well that we kept, we've kept it on as a primary product, which is very rare. I I would say, I think most 99% of startups have to pivot, Mm -hmm. um, in the first, after they launch. Um, but we also have to read the market. You have to understand what your consumers want. I mean, we are a hundred percent consumer centric. And so everything we do is, is based on the feedback we've had in, in this, you know, sort of quantitative ways. So we're understanding it, that we're not just addressing the squeaky wheel, but we're also addressing the majority. <clears throat> yeah. You know, so it, I just, I think it's so valuable. Some of the, the learnings that you've taken away here. I mean, I, I think you're right. Most people that I talk to who've done a startup have to pivot in some form or fashion. But I think I go back to just that grounding point that you talked about earlier. I mean, you, you took the time to really say, is this a pain point? I think a lot of people say, is this an idea that I'm invested in? Let's go do it. And then they have to adjust it because it wasn't geared towards the consumer. I think what I like, what I love about your product is you spent so much time learning the consumer, so much time learning the pain points of the consumer yeah. that you were able to just hit the vein. It's like being able to just hit the bullseye with the product coming out of the gate. And that's unusual because I do think that what you're leaning into, um, you have to lay aside your ego and keep asking, what does the customer want? What does the customer want? And so sometimes yeah. our ego can get in the way of what we're trying to launch and we're launching something yeah. that more for ourselves than for the, for the customer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, and we had to scope some things out to get to market, which was painful, but it, it, it was, we made the right decision because we got it on the market and we were able to start generating revenue. And so we're in a really good position now. Um, so, but, and I love the way you said that. Yeah. I mean, it was real important to me before I took anybody's, and in any capital, outside capital, that we knew we could grow this business and we could be successful for both our investors and for our customers. Um, and that was, because I have to sleep at night, right? Yeah. <laughs> like the worst <laughs> to me would be like, I didn't plan well enough. I didn't understand the market well enough. I didn't understand the user and the consumer well enough. Yeah. Um, sorry, investor. Right. <laughs> right. Right. That doesn't go over very well. Well, I wonder, yeah. I wonder too, like, you know, I would love to talk a little bit about, so you have this um, AI focused engagement software. I'd love to talk a little bit about, you know, we've talked a lot about the product, the hardware. I'd love to talk a little bit about how does software play into this whole um, product for you? Okay. So I'm going to give you why the, why we did this, like the 10,000 foot view. So the industry is projecting that the earbud will overtake the cell phone more so than the the you know sort of glasses or the watch as the dominant communication and computing device of the future wow. we have sort of seen this coming and so the the industry can't realize that type of growth and that type of use case without um having a comfortable earbud that you can wear for long periods of time so that was our sort of foothold entry point into the marketplace um and then we our go-to-market strategy so our way of breaking into the market everyone in the in the earbud space talks about music go uses sexy artists as their ambassadors or uh athletes listening to music and promoting the music side of things but when we did a deep dive into heavy earbud users they love music but they're listening to the music on their stereo on their in-home speakers they're not using their earbuds for music they're actually using their earbuds for audiobooks podcasts streaming video and phone calls yeah and so we have sort of created this new vertical within this industry that we, this terrible name, but, you know, called the spoken word vertical mm-hmm. um, and really designed everything around that. So, you know, having a really long battery life, our, our battery is nine and a half um, hours of ba- battery, full usage, full, wow. full timing with 33 hours of idle. We have a tether system, like a cable system, like you mentioned earlier, because in case that timing runs out, people can plug it, the 
wired it into their device to plug the, the wired cable side into their device. Um, but then we are building, we've also for about two years been building. So that use case, those people who are listening to audiobooks and podcasts pretty heavily or having phone calls on the go, you know, let's say you're riding your bike, you're listening to a podcast and you hear an interesting quote or a fact that you want to save. Right now, people are like stopping, pausing, rewinding, writing it down. Pause, rewind, writing it down, right? We've created a, a productivity system where you can, on the go, activate your earbuds, so swipe or voice assistance, and we will record the last 20 seconds, the next 20 seconds, translate that to text, add the metadata, so who the author is, who the podcaster is, what platform it came from, and then watermark it butterflies. We'll also timestamp it, and then you have the ability to voice tag. So this is for my Genghis Khan article. Wow. I love history, so I started to <laughs> reference history. Um, so then you, we save it to your profile. You can use it any way you want. So you can send it to your Evernote account. You can send it. You can post it. You whatever you want with that. Um, but that is a real powerful um, productivity tool. We are addressing with a current need again. But what we're doing is introducing a SaaS pro product essentially to a hardware, um, and so so that this growth where the industry is headed, that learning starts to happen. Um, and so we're well positioned for that next level of computing power um, that we'll have once, you know, things like AI start to improve and so forth. This is absolutely brilliant. I just, I love talking oh. to you. I have to say, first of all, you're just so smart. So that's just really cool <laughs> that, um, that you're just able to apply just some, again, just a knowledge of, taking something that's not working for you, but then learning that, hey, this is also an issue for the market and just how you've been able to kind of go end to end with this solution. I would love, um, as we think about like, what, what would some of your final thoughts be for our listeners today? Um, especially, you know, a lot of the folks that listen to our podcast are entrepreneurs, um, product developers, um, looking, lean, kind of leaning into that startup space. What, what were some things you would want to leave them with be? I mean, I, you just have to get it out there. I do think it's, to, you, to your point earlier, I do think it's really important that you make sure you have an audience and that you can actually sell what you're building. Because building something, I mean, it takes all the guts in the world and it takes all the courage. And then to get it on the market, you know, it it's, takes a lot. You have to be a little bit crazy. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I think anyone who's in the entrepreneurial space, I mean, there are people, but they're a little crazy, right? Um, and and so that, and just know, I mean, also have a foundation where you can have that time where you can get out even, you know, because you're going to be working more than probably you've ever worked in your life. So to know to take care of yourself. Yeah. And I say that out loud. I'm not awesome at it, but I, I'm working on it. Um, and then I would say, I guess, to all those industrial product designers or product physical product designers out there hit me up in linkedin we're always looking for good people love that <laughs> so, <laughs> i love it yeah. i love it um well you know what thank you so much for your time today this has been incredible i've enjoyed just hearing about your journey i've enjoyed hearing about um this earbud system that you've created and after we uh you know, in the recording for the podcast, I'm going to go stalk you on LinkedIn and also check it out more because oh. as you, as you kind of mentioned, this is something that I think it just hits the vein of what people are complaining about. And uh, yes, and because sometimes I like to go to sleep with my earbuds in and invariably in the morning, I'm looking for them all over the place, under the bed, you know, in the bed. Yeah. <laughs> so I just, I just love this so much. So thank you for your time today, Shay. Yeah, it was great. Thanks, Natalie. I really appreciate it. And I love your podcast. So keep it up. I really appreciate what you're doing for the space. Well, awesome. Thank you so much. Well, to our listeners, um, you can follow Shay, go over to butterflies.com. You can also check her out on LinkedIn or go to Twitter and check out butterflies there. And that's B-U-D-E-R-F-L-Y-S. Uh, to our listeners, thank you for joining the Innovation Meets Leadership podcast. Remember, don't just get out of the box, break the box and set it on fire. Let's go transform something. Thank you for joining us for the Innovation Meets Leadership podcast. Be sure to subscribe to our show on iTunes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook at Innovation Meets Leadership. And visit our site, 
at innovationmeetsleadership.com for more innovation resources.